Okay, this is a Broodmother replay analysis for Ghost Ape. Um, first we'll talk about the pick real quick. Um, I didn't look at the draft order, so I'll look at that right now because obviously draft order is pretty important when you're playing these kinds of cheesy heroes. Um, so you saw everyone but the sniper. You saw the clinks, the lion, the quap, and the clockwork. Um, so it's a pretty decent brood game. I would certainly be fine picking brood into all of those heroes. I'm not a huge fan of playing brood mid versus quap. It is doable. Um, I don't actually think the Quap was mid this game. I can't uh, find out in the replay, um, but it's certainly certainly doable, um, and you can run over this game for sure. So your itemization is fine. One thing you didn't do, you should, since you're always going to get web, get web and go down mid and place at least your first web. Um, some people don't like to place their second web because um, you become phased when you're on your web, which means you can't block creeps. Um, usually, for the most part, I end up placing my first web so it catches the edge of this camp here. Um, the center of it's usually usually here in the middle, um, and then I will place my second web upon the creep ways meeting. Only reason you want to do it early is because then you spend either 50 or 100 mana, and it will just regen before you uh, get level 2. So it's just kind of like free mana, basically. Um, inevitably, what's going to happen is you'll go down here, place two webs, and you've basically consumed a mango's worth of mana immediately. Your block, I'm going to back up just so we can watch that. Um, so one thing you should do when you're blocking is just double-click your portrait um, down here on the bottom left. And what it will do is it will lock the camera to your hero. That way... You don't get these weird perspectives like you have here. Um, blocking is virtually impossible to do with edge panning. So either use camera grip or double click on your hero. Um, I'm not sure how much detail I want to put in. Um, this web is okay. It should have been back a little bit more towards your tower, but it's not a big deal. Um, web placement is inevitably a pretty personal pretty personal thing. It's pretty big that you get that deny there. You should get level 2 off this range creep. And you do. All of this is fine. I don't know how much of what you're doing is intentional, but everything here is fine. Um, be a little more careful, I think, of making sure your spiderlings don't just die randomly. Um, and then you want your spiderlings, you want your spider babies to be hitting every single creep that dies. So having a hotkey that selects all of your spiderlings. Um, is pretty good. You can use tab and it will select them by group, the spiderlings and the spiderites. Um, but I generally just have a key that selects my hero and a key that selects my spiders and then I use unified control orders um, or unified orders with control. So what that does is let's say I have my hero selected but I want to control all of my units. I just hold down control and then anything I do, my units will also do. So that works for M clicking or A clicking or just like moving around the map. Um, but it's just kind of easier to like control right click a creep and then just let go of control and right click away um, if you don't want your hero to go there. Um, anyway, so just I'm noticing that I guess is that you drag and drop or you drag select everything and then you play as if your spiderlings are just a part of you instead of microing them in any sense. Um, you're level 3 now. You should be looking to connect to one of these camps. You do. This is good. Um, on these early waves, because you have such high regen, I usually tank with my hero on these early small camps. 
This Quap is an idiot. I don't know what ring she is, but okay. So she's Pepeg. Um, here, this is something that it's easy to explain and understand, um, but it's hard to do in practice. So as soon as she uses her E, you should have a mental idea of how much damage that's going to do. Um, and then notice that she's used Dagger, she's used an E that has two points in it, she no longer has Blink, and she should just die right here. Um, so it's like you've got a fair, a decently sized little minion army here, you've got a Mango, you've got a Sal for going under tower, she has very low armor, all she has is a Fairy Fire. So you kind of back up and give her cooldown. Um, there's something in Dota that I call the dance, and it happens a lot in low MMR, and I noticed it when I first started playing um, Dota because PA mid was very, very popular. And what the dance is, or what I call it, oh, I can't do it without leaving the replay, um, is you're laning mid versus PA, and she throws her dagger at you, and you get scared because she threw a dagger at you, and you run to your tower. And then the dagger slow wears off, and you run back to the lane, and then she throws a dagger at you, and you run away. And you just kind of do this back and forth, um, like, dance is what I called it. And what I realized is if she uses her dagger on you, it's already done the damage. Like, you don't need to be scared of her dagger once it's done the damage. So similarly with this co-op, every time she uses her E on you, when she's level 3, she ended up killing all your spiders because what did you do every time she pressed E is you ran away. So she uses E and you run away. She uses E and you run away. And what you should be doing is she uses E and then you run in like that. So this one, this last time you start to realize that you're like, wait a second, this is ridiculous. I'm tanking all these anyway, and it's not doing anything. Um, you got your soul ring, you got your salve, you're sitting pretty. Your farm is pretty decent. So you're still high CS even though she's getting all her spiders. So you're actually owning this lane, to be honest. Um, one thing you should do though is you should be using your spawn spiderlings as much as possible. So just go ahead and use your soul ring off cooldown, basically, um, and get out of get out of this weird situation where she's just spamming you out with her E. Um, and once you have like a decently sized army, you can just send them. So you can place a web to connect this web to this camp, and you can just farm this camp with your spiderlings while you play the lane normally. Um, I just played this exact lane today and we'll go look at that here in a second because I just want to talk about probably the first 10 minutes of this game. Um, so here you do start farming which is good. You're not really missing anything mid. This is good but you're spending a lot of time kind of doing nothing or not farming. And you want to make sure that you're getting as much as possible. Brood farms extraordinarily fast, um, and that's why she is. That's one of the reasons why she's so good. Um, I think a misconception is that the only way to deal with Brood is to be able to kill her spiders, um, and really the way to deal with Brood is to be able to stop her from farming. So if you have 20k net worth on someone, it doesn't matter if you have spiderlings. Um, some games with the, the pick system right now, currently, uh, you'll just get unlucky and you'll, let's say you pick Brood and they have a Kunkka or something and you just never ever get to have spiders. Or a Quap, for example. She will always be able to kill your spiders the entire game. Her Scream of Pain will one-shot them if you don't have a pipe and her ult will one-shot them independent of what you do, even with the even with your 25 talent, um, which gives them 350 health. So, what that means is, is that you don't want to rely on spiderlings this game to be your sole source of everything. Like, you're not 100% a brood mama spider build. 
and block your own camp there. That kind of sucks. And here you finally figure out, I think I should go to the side. Um, but you should already have um, a farming pattern that's better than this. So you should be taking this small camp that you've been taking, this medium camp here, this camp here, and then these two camps here. So at a minimum, you're getting one, two, three, four, five camps and some of the wave every minute. Um, and that means that you're going to have a lot of farm. Um, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to buy whatever item you want. So versus Quop, it's pretty common to rush Orchid because if she ever does anything stupid, you just Orchid her and she dies instantly. And then it also saves your Spiderlings from, from her. Orchid's also pretty good versus Lion. Uh, it's pretty good versus Clinks. I usually don't go Orchid in, um, versus any of those heroes individually except Quop. Um, but it's good versus Quop and it's good versus other people. So I would be going in Orchid first item. Um, I don't know why you have this belt of strength. I guess you're going treads. Um, but I would probably get an orchid before anything else. Because that's what allows you to remove the quap from the game. So here you go. You bring your spiders mid. And she ults. And that does give her some net worth. It doesn't give her a lot. So if you look at your net worth, um, it's like... She has 700 net worth on you, and she's farmed basically every single spider that you've had. Um, which just... It, it, spiders just aren't a lot. But what it is, mostly, is when she kills your spider, she prevents you from farming. And that's a bigger deal, in my opinion. It's less important that she gets the spider kill. It's more important that your spider stays alive to farm for you. Uh, so, I'm going to be watching... And you're just kind of stuck in this static lane where you don't really trust yourself to go jungle. Um, like here, you're just sitting here watching her farm, but you could be farming that camp, or this camp, or some of these other three camps. So, you've placed four out of your six webs, and you feel trapped, which should never be the case. Okay, so I think we've talked about that long enough, because um, if you stomp this lane, then the game plan is pretty simple. It's just farm and get items and kill people. Not that complicated. So let's go ahead and take a look very quickly at um, this game where I did very well versus a Quap mid as Brood Mother. And we'll just look at a couple differences in how... I played the lane versus you. Oh, I also got shared tangles. I needed that. So I went and placed my two webs. You'll notice that this one catches the edge of this camp, just like I said, and this one is here. Um, I personally value the mana more than I value the extra couple seconds of blocking. Um, maybe it's a mistake, maybe it's not, but it's just preferred. Um, and recently I've been experimenting with not placing this web at all, but that was just what I decided for this game. So you'll notice I'm doing the camera thing where I've double clicked my portrait. So I don't actually have to worry about my camera location, I'm always centered on my hero. And then I can just focus on the block. And then this is where I say, man, I wish I hadn't placed that web because I would have gotten a better block. But inevitably the block is good enough. So on the first wave is mid and general rule, it's much less important to get every CS um, than it is to make sure that they don't deny any CS. So unfortunately she got a deny, uh, which means I'm not level 2 right now. And because she's under tower, I'm not going to be able to get a deny, which means she will be level 2. So I'm just now, I'm just trying to draw aggro, I'm trying to force her to come to this range creep because I know she wants the range creep which means that she is more likely to miss some of these CS. So she has to choose between a melee and a range. She chooses to get the ranged. That's the correct choice for her. 
um, but forcing your opponent to make decisions between uh, two unideal alternatives is very, very good. So, she would rather get both CS, but I forced her to pick. And then here, just making sure that I always secure the range creep with my Q. And then whether or not I get the deny, I try to have my spiders. And you'll notice that at the end of the second wave, I have a very, very large spider army. Where in contrast, you had like two spider things or something. They're very small. And that allows me to farm this camp really quick. Um, Brood is pretty good at denying. You'll notice as soon as she uses her E, I realized that she didn't have Blink, and I was able to kill her. Unfortunately, I died, but I say worth. Um, I died and got XP. I forced a TP, and uh, and I'll be able to be full health and mana when I come back. Some of my spiderlings are alive, so I'm again making sure they're hitting every creep that dies, whether or not I get the last hit or the deny. But I'm trying to as best I can. Um, I made a judgment call here when I placed this web. So the alternative to um, to this web is to go across or to go to this camp here. Um, these webs are much more aggressive. They put you in a worse position to farm. Um, and I realize that it's not unlikely that this disruptor TP's met again if you did it once already. Um, and I don't want to get glimpsed into a position that I don't like. So I just made a small judgment call there. I'm just kind of poking her a little bit. Probably not the best idea. I kind of regret that actually. And over here, and here you'll notice I'm trying to micro my spiderlings to where my hero is tanking. It wasn't very successful. And then I needed to get my next level there so I could get these webs up. And this is the extent of my webs. So I have these four webs, and that's all I can work with right now. So my goal is to not feed her spiders as best as possible. So you'll notice I don't immediately go for that range creep. And instead, I just send my creeps or my spiders into here to farm this. Now this can be very, very deadly to your spiders to do this, unless you have a certain amount. So there's kind of a critical mass where they kill them faster than... They, the spiders kill the creeps faster than the creeps kill the spiders. And it can sustain. Um, once I get my level 6, I get access to more camps. This amps up my farming speed. And you'll notice how far back I am. So it's like, while well, she's here laning, I am just extending my farm. So I'm taught net worth, and she is 600 behind me instead of vice versa. Just because Brood farms so fast, you can get away with this. And again, she's sitting mid, so my spiders go somewhere else. And we're only going to watch the first 10 minutes again. Double damage. So there, I just used my hero to pull aggro on those creeps. That way, my spiders stay phased on the nets. Here, I'm looking for where the quap is. Quap is top, which means I'm not so scared about Vulture um, losing, killing my creeps. I probably should have pushed this tower, to be honest. In retrospect, that's kind of a mistake. Okay, nobody's perfect. And then, this is when I kind of realize, okay, Quap is like really committed there. Magic, we get a critter kill. And then here, this is... Uh, the reason I'm not hitting this tower here is because I don't really want it to go down. Um, like, I'm not going to get the tower kill. The chip damage is relatively... Um, useless, I guess, basically, because I take the tower quickly when I want to take the tower quickly. 
um, and I'm not ready to go farther into their base. I'm trying to stay a little bit more conservative, make sure I just get my uh, items and tines uh, very quickly. And, of course, if Quop shows, I don't want her to just ult and kill my spiders, because then I won't be able to farm. And I will just lane, try to get as much as I can, and do this. Rinse and repeat. And I end up getting... I end up getting pretty farmed. So at 10 minutes I have 100-ish last hits and I have my Orchid. Um, and the Quap has a very hard time coming against me now. And so I can start playing aggressive, I can start going to different places on the map, trying to push this tower. Um, we can get more into my replay later, but we'll just talk about the laning phrase for now because usually if you mess up the laning phase on Brood, the game is over. Um, which means you actually have to basically always win your lane. Um, if you ever lose lane on Brood, it's, like I said, the game's over. So making sure you get those mechanics and concepts down and having the confidence to just go and farm and realize that, yes, she got quite a bit of farm in the mid lane and I have double her net worth because she was getting a wave and I was getting most of a wave plus five camps or plus four camps every single minute. So that concludes my thoughts.